asking everybody if you'd like to come and sit down, that'd be really good. And we're ready to start our service of communion today. The fifth Sunday of Lent. Gosh, it's going fast, isn't it? <laughs> Did you enjoy last Sunday, Mothering Sunday? Some people, I'm sure. Um, yeah, mixture of emotions for many, I know. Um, exciting for people who are soon to be mothers, a mother. <laughs> and I was able to go down to Bedford to see my mum, who is 92 and really enjoyed it. In fact, she cracked a couple of jokes, so she's all there. <laughs> so a very warm welcome to you. And in fact, I suppose I should say top of the morning, because just across the sea from us, of course, there's lots of celebrations going on, in fact, all around the world, because we're in, uh, celebrating St. Patrick today. I'm sure you couldn't have missed that. <laughs> Actually, he died in March, um, on March 17th, 461, very long time ago. Um, I wonder what he would make of all these celebrations. And I thought we'd just spend a little moment thinking about St. Patrick because it's not just about drinking and whatever. Um, he really was a very special man. Probably born on the northwest coast of Britain. Hey, hey, that's where we are. And he was quite a wild youth from a noble family. Age 16, he was kidnapped by pirates, Irish pirates, no less and taken across the sea, where he was sold as a slave. One of his jobs was to care for animals out on the hills. Goodness me, imagine that in the hills of Ireland. Wouldn't be a very good job, would it, in the rain? Beautiful, but wet. So there he was, all on his own, looking after animals on the Irish hills. But he, and he became a man of thought and dreams and visions. He seemed to have a lot of extra spiritual experiences while he was there. So he became a man of prayer. And on one occasion, he said that he would pray over 100 prayers in a day and the same at night. I suppose there wasn't much else to do, nobody else to talk to, so he, he talked to God. And he, in one of his visions, you probably know this, he saw a boat. He thought, aha, this is my way of escape out of slavery. So he traveled all the way around the coast of Ireland. Well, I don't know all the right way around, but he went 200 miles on a travel um, and found this boat and persuaded them to let him on board. And off they went on their trip, probably down to the north of France. Um, of course, there was a storm, very stormy seas around there. And... Patrick stood up and said, be careful, don't be fearful. I know the story of Jesus Christ who stilled the storm. So he then stood up and said a prayer and the storm ceased. Amazing. And then he went back home and he was, his parents persuade, tried to persuade him to stay, but oh no, he had another vision. And in this vision, he was called to Ireland. He was called to go back to the place where he'd been taken as a slave, as a teenager. And there he began his great mission to take the faith to Ireland and to tell them about Jesus. We often remember him for his famous visual aid of the shamrock with its three equal leaves, the leaf, um, as he used that as an illustration of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So that's a little bit about St. Patrick. Maybe you didn't know all of that. A great man of faith. I have a little book of Celtic saints. Some of you will know that. And it's just so really fascinating to read about how the faith was spread in those early days and is still being spread now. But today is also the season of Passion Tide. In the old church calendar, this was called Passion Sunday, two weeks before Easter, because, of course, next week is Palm Sunday, when we won't be thinking about the cross. We'll be celebrating Jesus the King. So let's be still for a moment and think about our service today. Think about the communion that we've come to share. Think about one another. Think about Jesus and God our Father and this two weeks of passion leading up to Holy Week and Easter.
And so we begin our worship by singing a great hymn of praise, which is number 564 in Mission Praise, and the words are on the screen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Let's stand to sing together. So if you have the booklets um, for the Lent communion service, we're at the beginning of that, and the words will be on the screen. The Lord be with you. And we say together the prayer of access, preparation prayer, sorry. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to this time of penitence, coming before God, having praised him, we know of our faults. So let's be reassured that the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. 
let us together confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. And lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Hear the assurance of God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's collect is for Passion Tide, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ, has delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to have two readings. The first is from Hebrews, and then we'll follow that with the song number 37, As the Deer. First reading comes from Hebrews, chapter 5, beginning at read at verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who, sent, who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submissions. Although he was a son, he learned obedience to what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord.
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The gospel readings is from John 12, beginning to read at verse 20. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will also be. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to, to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was like thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world shall be driven out. And when I am lifted up from this earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as Andy speaks to us. Good morning. Not an overly lengthy preach this morning, you'll be glad to know. And before anybody casts aspersions, that's got absolutely nothing to do with Liverpool playing Manchester United this afternoon. But it's because the sheer volume and weight of what's in that passage, I couldn't, for the life of me, cover it all. So I'm just going to look at one small part of that passage. And that's a strange response from Jesus to somebody wanting to see him it's one of them where i wish i could have been there and said to him jesus what what exactly are you going on about what is that supposed to mean and it's when he says to the greeks when philip and andrew bring them to him he says unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies it remains just a single grain but if it dies it bears much fruit I don't know about you, but for me, somebody, if that was somebody coming to see, that would be a strange greeting, wouldn't it? A strange response to somebody wanting to see you. I think Jesus there is introducing us to a pattern, a pattern of loss and renewal that runs throughout our lives and the world. We've all lived through it and experienced it, sometimes by choice, other times it's just by chance. But either way, it's there. An example of that is... Have you ever fallen in love and committed your life to someone? Yeah? If you have, you've had to let parts of your old life go. You're no longer single. Something of your single life must cease to be so that you can be fully with that other person. Those of us who are parents, if you're a parent, you know that there are sacrifices of yourself and your life to be made as you're now responsible for another person. Not necessarily in a biblical or scriptural manner. We've seen this with our eldest son, Ben, who makes my interest in Liverpool and football seem like 
a fleeting, you know, nothing. He goes everywhere, home, away, abroad, even if it means planes, trains and automobiles to get to somewhere, because he thinks that's cheaper. Three flights are cheaper than paying for one, Dad. So how long are you in the airport for that four hours? I said, what are you doing in between? Well, eating and drinking. I said, well, you're not doing that if you just get one flight there and one... Anyway, it was, it's been a progression with him. They bought the house, and he's, he's Billy Big Hex. I'll be all right, Dad. I'll still get to all the games. I said, OK, let's see how that works out for you. All of a sudden, not going on them Europeans away anymore. I said, why is that, Ben? Because the house... Oh, no, no. I've been to all them grounds already. I said, OK. He said, I'm just going to go to the home and aways in this country and the cup games. I said, OK. A couple of months later, starting to pick me away games now, Dad. I said, why is that, Ben? Because of the house. He said, no, I've been to all these grounds before. I said, OK. The baby comes along. I'm not going to these midweek home league games anymore, Dad. I said, is that because of the house and the baby, Ben? No, no. In the end, he finally admitted... Yeah, that's a cranky time of a night, and it's not fair on Sean. I said, so, don't you tell me so. We make sacrifices as our life circumstances change. And there are costs, aren't there? There are losses. For every choice we make, for every yes we say, there's a no, and probably more than one. We see the same pattern in nature. The changing of the seasons. Fallen leaves followed by new blooms. The setting and the rising of the sun. And we see scriptural stories of loss and renewal as well, don't we? Abram left his country and his kin behind so he, may, might, so he could be made a great nation, renamed in the process as Abraham, and a blessing to all the families of the earth. Jacob lost his old identity, so he become a new man, Israel, with a new life. I touched the week before last on James and John, successful businessmen, they left the father, the boats, the nets, and their employees to become disciples of Jesus. Jesus himself teaches his disciples, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands. They will kill him, and three days later, he will rise again. Loss and renewal. It's no secret, it's everywhere. Dying and rising, letting go, getting back, leaving and returning. Look at some of the words we say in our liturgy sometimes. Christ has died, Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Or that great Easter acclamation, no greater example is there. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. So a question to us all is, what in lives do we need to let go of? What might, what might we need to leave behind? What needs to die so that something new can rise and be renewed? Paul quite openly shared with us in the WhatsApp this week that he's going to his stage one of his discernment uh, process in the coming weeks. Be assured of my, prepare, my prayers for you, Paul, as a member of the vocations team. But for me, when that journey started, I started training once, one night a week in the cathedral and weekends, mainly in Manchester. But that meant for me, football and boys' brigade... I'd played every Saturday for as long as I can humanly remember and gone to BB on a Tuesday night for the same length of time. They had to stop. I had to put them down because a new chapter, a new part, a new season, if you like, as we say in the Bible, times and seasons, had begun for me and for us as a family. It was hard. I'm not saying letting go of things is easy, but, you know, there are times when we have to. And I don't think <clears throat> today... Today's passage is it's coincidence that the gospel is set in the context of the Passover festival. When we remember what that's about, the Passover, the celebration of the Israelites' liberation from slavery in Egypt. It was about freedom and new life, moving on, leaving behind, moving into a new chapter. Then we have these, all we're told are that the Greeks who come to Philip... We pick Philip because he can identify with them better than the other disciples. Say we wish to see Jesus. I don't know why they want to see him, and to my knowledge, it doesn't tell us anywhere else in the passage why. But why wouldn't they? Let's not forget in the run-up to this, Jesus, this man, 
has turned water into wine. He's cleansed the temple, healed the son of the royal official, healed the paralytic, fed 5,000 with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish, walked on water, gives sight to the man born blind, and raised the four-day dead Lazarus from the dead. Say we wish to see Jesus. Wouldn't you, if you'd seen, heard, or witnessed all of that? We only get to read about it. That's the Jesus I want to see. Philip tells Andrew about the Greeks' request, and then they tell Jesus, and Jesus says to them, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. A strange response to some people who've literally just asked to see, and we don't know how far they've travelled. And we need to know, don't we, that that dying Jesus is talking about is not is more than physical death. Yes, it is that, but it's more. We die a thousand deaths throughout our lives. The loss of a loved one, a relationship, health issues, opportunities, dreams, all deaths we don't ask for. Other times it comes by choice, when we give up part of ourselves for another, when we change beliefs and values so that we can be more authentically ourselves. Debates are raging within the Church of England yet again at the moment about changes in, in, in our theology, if you like, and, and, and in how we minister to certain groups of people. Sometimes we have to let things go in order for new things to thrive. And sometimes there are things we need to let go of, things we cling to that deny us the fullness of the life we want and the life God offers. What gets in the way of us having that John 10, 10 life he promises us life and all abund in all abundance? Fear, anger, resentment, regret, disappointment, guilt, the need to be right, approval, and in some ways the worst of all, even if it's not a proper word, the unforgiveness we can carry around in our hearts and our souls. All issues we all deal with daily and weekly that get in the way of us living and being what God wants us to be. And that's because following Jesus isn't a spectator sport. It's a way to be followed, a truth to be embodied, a life to be lived. It's been a great grain of wheat that falls into the ground and dies so we might bear more fruit. That's where we see him. That's where we meet him in the letting go, the emptying, the leaving behind. That makes space for new life and new opportunity to appear. You've probably had at least one time in your life when you look back on it and say, I never want to go through that again. But when you look back, you see how, how, no matter how painful and how difficult, it can change us for the better. And I also reckon that it's one of those times when you know you've seen Jesus, when you have experienced and known that love of God, that presence, that working in our lives. I've had them. I've learned a lot <clears throat> about myself as a result of them. I make no secret of having had a very challenging childhood where... I came to faith through turning to God as the last resort. Football never helped, school never helped, BB never, all my mates never. It was only when I turned around and said, look, God, I've got nowhere else to go with this. But to you, that started to change and reshape the person I was. I've mentioned this before, but a really interesting exercise I went through when I was applying for the ordination process. You asked to fill in on a form a box that said key significant events and people who shaped your faith. And it was interesting watching the thread running through all those events and those people where God had had his hand, even though I mightn't have seen it at the time, on me and us, guiding us. Exercise well worth doing if you've got a spare half hour at some point. But letting go doesn't mean rejection or walking away. It's what allows us to be more authentic, more ourselves. It makes room, room for new life and new ways of being. Our letting go gives God something with which to work. Why then would we cling to and live life on our own as an isolated grain of wheat? So what's the grain of wheat for you? What is it that needs to fall and die so that God can move in and release you from those things? Maybe they're there at the very places waiting to bear fruit in your life. Maybe that's where you'll see Jesus. Holy Week, the empty tomb, the dawn of a new day and the renewal of life when the single grain of wheat becomes the bread of life. 
I had a com I was out with my son on Friday and I had a conversation with him about one of his mates who's asked him to be best man for him. And he said, he was talking about the stag do, and he said, there won't be a lot of people there, Dad. And I said, why is that? He said, because his mates had made some decisions in life that had took him down a, the wrong and a destructive path. He said he's had to cut out a lot of people and in other situations to get him back onto the straight and narrow and where he wants to be. It's the same for us with God. We need to look at those things that are stopping us living the life he's calling us to live and being the people he's calling us to be. I know I've certainly got them. And unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus doing that for us at Easter, the single grain became the bread of life. Let's pray. Holy Father, we thank you that you call us to be the best version of ourselves we can be. Help us see where we can improve. See, help us see where we can be the people you're calling us to be in our lives, in our world, in our community, with all those we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Certainly food for thought on our, as we begin Passion Tide, isn't it? Thinking about what Jesus gave up. And that was for us. So now we're going to stand and together declare our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. So let's stand. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's be seated as I lead the prayers. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. O Lord, we bring before you today the church, your people, and its leaders, its bishops, and all those in authority. We pray for the difficult times that many church leaders are going through. We pray for love and acceptance and understanding, that those who are in leadership positions may lead the people as Jesus led, being forgiving and including everyone, and understanding. We pray for the past clergy of this parish, and we thank you, Lord, for all that they've brought to this area. Think of Mike in his new job. And we pray for Andy, at the present time, carrying a lot of extra. Pray for his health and for wisdom and clear vision as he leads us. 
Strengthen our Bishop John and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for creation, and especially at this springtime when we see the signs of so much new life, when things have looked dead, but now they're showing green and colorful, colorful yellows. We thank you for those charities that work with the climate organizations, and we, we pray about climate change. We thank you for this opportunity we've had to join in with the plastic count. We pray that we will be faithful in what we do to try to reverse the problems of the climate emergency. O oh Lord, we pray for our royal family and for the king at this time of illness and unnecessary publicity. We thank you for their leadership. We thank you for all the good things that come out of having a royal family. We pray for ourselves that we may not be brought into gossiping and being nosy where we shouldn't be. We pray for those that produce the news bulletins, that there won't be judgment, but understanding and patience. Bless and guide Charles, our King. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our city of Liverpool and its leaders. We pray for our area of Fazakhli and all who live here and work here. We think of the schools and the hospitals in particular, all those who drive in for many reasons, those who are working, and we pray for the children as they approach their Easter break. We pray for all who care for others. We pray for our families near and far. We pray for ourselves as a parish, as we look forward in this year, particularly as we think about our, our parish weekend and the opportunity to get to know one another and to know you more. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those known to us who are unwell at this time, those who can't get out, those who are feeling sad, depressed, or without hope. And just in a quiet moment, Lord, we bring these people to you in prayer, asking for your blessing upon them this day. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ according to your promises. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Patrick and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we stand for the peace which we're going to share together as God's people. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
We're going to um, say the offertory prayer together now as we bring forward our gift offerings. We say it together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, and the splendor and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own have we given you. children here. We're now going to found, find out what our children have been doing while they've been out in their room, in their group. Today we have been learning about parables of Jesus and especially the parable of the prodigal son. And we've learned about how we all make wrong decisions, how we are all sinners, but God loves us and wants us to bring us into his heart. So we've made some pictures of ourselves. And if you open up the heart, you want to open yours? We go, there you are. There's faith inside God's heart. Where's yours, Rosalind? You can show yours. No. You can show yours, Emily. Who's inside God's heart? Me. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Laura. We're going to stand and sing our next hymn, which is Father, We Love You. 142, if you're using a book. Let's stand to sing. Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your will. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. 
This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine, took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue in our prayer together. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him, it with, f- <coughs> excuse me, feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
and we join in that prayer after communion together. Almighty God, <clears throat> we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Notice us before our final hymn and blessing. Laura wants to say something about the parish weekend. Hi. Hopefully everybody who's coming has received their individual letters um, about what's left to pay and when by. If you haven't, I've likely got one here for you. Um, the day for the second payment is today, um, but if people haven't received the letters and stuff, that's fine. If you could just let me know what's going on um, and when it'll be paid and stuff, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, that's it. Is that it? Yeah. Sure for you. Want to say about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Separate notice. I've already said it, but we've got these little um, key rings and things that say he is risen on the table um, in there for a little donation. They've been making nice gifts for Easter. or I know a lot of you have got them already, but if anyone would like one, they're still there, just a donation. Thanks. Sorry. Thanks, Laura. For the food bank. Did I say that? Not a donation for me, a donation for the food bank. <laughs> Good grief. Um, on that note, the list is still up there. We, got, we are in very, very short supply at the moment, and that's not just us, that's the warehouse. So when we got our delivery this week, there was an awful lot of stuff we didn't get because they haven't got it. So if anybody has got any donations or anything they want to give to us, please feel free, and thank you for all you do so far as well. Easter services are there. Monday, Thursday, St Paul's at 7 Good Friday Reflections, 10 o'clock St Paul's, 2 o'clock here. And Easter Sunday is a team service, so we'll, we'll be just here at 11.15. Yep, don't forget, PCC, 7.30. Um, for those on PCC, you may wonder where stuff is. Frida's got no broadband, so that's why you haven't had anything sent here. Um, we may need to just bring hard copies on the night, but it's not going to be a lengthy meeting. It's only a relatively short... Well, it might be, depends on you lot, but it's a relatively short agenda anyway. Crumbs on a Wednesday, 10 till 10.30 till 12.30, followed by Cameo. Um, what are you doing this week, Lynn? Anything? Tea and chat this week, and then the week after, communion and hot cross buns, not necessarily at the same time. You won't be getting a hot cross bun instead of your wafer. Ladies Bible study, see Laura, who's not here, she's gone back in there. And after that, we're going to sing our final hymn, which is Good, Good Father, number 25 in the black book, if you're using a book, otherwise it's on the screen.
final blessing. Celtic blessing on this St. Patrick's Day. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and all those we love and all those we should love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Christ, amen. And we're leaving through this door here. And there's still an opportunity to donate to Katia. You thought I'd forgotten, didn't you, Steve? I had. Who was and is and will always be. Holy, holy, you are God Almighty. You are my song, you are my hope, my strength. Oh,